Hi, Carl here for Pro V TV. So, a week or so ago, we released a video comparing the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K to a bunch of other mirrorless cameras, and we're working on a video shot on the same day comparing it to larger cinema style cameras. Now, this has been a huge project, but I wanted to take a break in between those two videos to make this one for you to discuss one thing in particular, and that is the results of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in the overexposure test, because it's get, been getting a lot of feedback down in the comment section down below, some fantastic questions. In fact, these videos overall have just been getting a fantastic response, so thank you so much to everyone who's engaging with them down in the comments. It's great to see all your thoughts, whether you think we're doing a good job or whether you think we're doing a bad job, whether it's things for, we could improve on, whether it's things that we're doing really well and how helpful they are. It's great to hear all of your feedback, so thank you for that. But this is the test in particular I want to talk about today and I want to try and replicate and delve into a little bit further. So this is our overexposure test of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. What we do for this is we do a shot at zero stops in log, which is what you can see here on the left, and then grade it. We then do a stop at one, a shot at one stop overexposure, two stops overexposed, and three stops overexposed, and then we try and grade those back down to match zero, to see how close we can get to zero. Now, the way that I did it with all the cameras in all of these tests is to up the ISO. I kept the camera settings exactly the same on every single camera. And that is ISO 400 T2.8 at zero, ISO 400 T2, ISO 800 T2, and ISO 1600 at T2. And it's that bumping up in ISO that people think, and I agree with them, is the reason that Blackmagic looks like this at plus three stops. Because actually, most of the other cameras did better than this at plus three stops. You can see here, plus two looks absolutely great. But then plus three, it looks very, very clipped. Her face and her jumper is completely gone. The table behind her, completely gone. So, for the next video we're going to release, it's going to be like this, and the previous one's going to be like this. We can't do anything about that. We filmed it all in one big mammoth day of filming. But, what we can do is delve in a little bit closer to this and see and try and see if we can answer two specific questions. The first one I want to answer is, is this down to the dual native ISO circuit inside the camera? And the second one I want to answer is, does RAW help this situation? I know a lot of people have been asking about RAW. So I'll get onto both of those in a second, but the first thing I want to do is try and replicate this. So we put a new setup together, and we just did one with Dan here in the showroom. And the first point of call was to try and replicate the exact same results to see if it was just some sort of a fluke, something maybe I did wrong. Let's see. And so here we can see zero, plus one, and plus two all look great. And plus three, we're getting the exact same thing. Very, very clipped on his face, very, very clipped on the table. It's obviously not clipped on his jumper anymore, but he's wearing a black jumper now rather than a, wet, uh, rather than a white one on Korean. So, I mean, obviously that's not clipped anymore, but you can see, you can judge just by his face and the table. We're getting exactly the same results here. So, the next thing we did is we did the same test again, but kept the ISO exactly the same. So we lit it differently for this test. We lit it so that I could shoot the entire test at ISO 400, and then just open up the iris on the lens in order to let more light in and overexpose. So I'm not changing the ISO at all. We did that at 400, and then we did that at 3200. Now the reason we chose those two, in case you don't know, is that the camera has a dual native ISO, which means it's got two circuits on its board, and so both of those are native ISOs. You can see on this chart here that we brought up, this is Blackmagic's chart, which they use to explain the dynamic range of the camera. And you can see up until we get to 1000, we've got a block of dynamic range that's higher. And so it has more stops of information in the highlights. And then from 1250 onwards, it goes lower. So we've got more dynamic range down in the shadows. So what that effectively means is that the lower circuit, the ISO 400, in theory, should have less information in the shadows, more in the highlights. And at 3200, should have more in the shadows, less in the highlights. There's a lot more to it than that if you delve in more detail on this graph, but really basics, that's sort of what it means. This is the first test. We did ISO 400, 
I started at 5.6, then went to T4, T2.8, and T2. So I'm not changing the ISO at all here. This is all in ProRes. We'll get onto RAW in a minute. And you can see here, the plus one and plus two stops look great, but plus three looks fantastic. His face isn't clipped anymore. The table's not that clipped behind him. There is clipping on the tablecloth there. There definitely is, there is on the plus two as well. But it's very under control and it's much more in line with what we saw on some of the other cameras. So, to answer first question number one, ISO 400 does a better job than that original test, by far. Now, moving over to 3200, what I did is I shot it. I changed all the lighting, so the lighting setup has changed between these two tests, because I needed to light it a lot darker. We're now at ISO 3200 T8, then T5.6, T4, and T2.8. And plus one and plus two look great. Again, a little bit of clipping on the tablecloth, not that much. And plus three, you are getting a little bit more information on his face than in the um, original test, but less than in the ISO 400. And you can see the tablecloth and the window behind him is definitely clipped there. So really we are seeing, and this is proving, that that first native ISO, ISO 400, has more information in the highlights and you're gonna be able to recover more from the highlights in your shot if you overexpose or if you've got really bright sources in your shot than you are at 3200. And that is the reason specifically that the original tests looked that way. Here we've got them side by side next to each other. Down at the bottom, you can see the original test, that's ISO 1600 ProRes at plus three stops. And you can see phase completely gone, table completely gone. Then we've got ISO 400 and ISO 3200. Now we can't rule out that the change in the lighting is causing some of these differences, but it shouldn't be making this much of a difference. And so it is very safe to say that ISO 400 performs by far the best here. 3200 performs um, be not quite as good, but way better than ISO 6 1600. Why 1600 is less? I don't know quite why it's this much less, but if you look at that chart in more detail, it does say that there's only 2.7 stops information in the highlights at 1,600, whereas at, one th at 3,200, there should be 3.7 stops in the highlights. And so that might well be the reason that that one looks so much better. So let's move on to RAW. Now we didn't use RAW in that original comparison, either for the mirrorless or the cinema cameras later on, because I think it's very healthy to think of them as two different cameras. You can't judge the performance of the Blackmagic based on its RAW alone. You need to take into consideration the ProRes to see what the camera can do. Now they're both just as relevant as each other. I just happened to choose ProRes for this group of tests because it's much more similar to the other cameras that I was testing. Really, nearly all of the other cameras only shot in a compressed format. They didn't have any form of raw capture. And so I wanted to be able to compare each camera, not on a level pegging field, but not on something that is dr dramatically different and better. So that's the reason I didn't use RAW in the main one. But a lot of people in the comment section have been saying, well, if you had shot in RAW, you'd be able to recover all of that information. So that's not really fair on the Black Magic. I agree with you, you probably can. Let's find out. So in here, what I've done is on each of those tests I've just showed you, I also flipped the camera across to RAW and I recorded it that way. So in this first split screen, what we can see is plus three stops on each of the tests. We've got the original 1600 down at the bottom, ISO 400 and then 3200. So this is the RAW shot graded back down using highlight recovery and all those little tools within DaVinci Resolve to get as good a result and as close a result to the original zero um, stops exposure shot that we did. Now you can see ISO 400 looked great. It looked great before RAW. It was obviously gonna look great now. ISO 3200, interestingly, has rescued nearly everything on his face. The clipping marks on his forehead are still there and they've gone a little bit yellow, but to be honest, I think the average person would not notice that at all. Just an average client that you're gonna show this, or if it's gonna be a quick shot in a sequence, you're never gonna notice that. And all the information is there on the table. The window is a little bit clipped there, but the table information is there. It looks pretty good. 
at 1,600, we're getting a lot more information back. You can see everything on his face. There's definitely clipping on his forehead. But all those overexposed areas that have been brought back have got a very definite yellow cast to them. In fact, if you look at the color chart on his right there, on the left of frame, if you look at the yellow clip, you can see in the top two, it looks yellow. It looks like it's meant to. On the bottom one, which has been recovered, that yellow has gone really dramatically skewed. It looks almost orange and it's broken up over the entire thing. That highlight recovery checkbox is definitely doing something very strange to yellows there. And that's the reason that his face looks like that. But you will be able to correct for that a little bit and it is bringing a lot of information back there. So this highlight recovery is this little tick box within Resolve. It's within the raw settings and I'm not entirely sure what it does to the image to be quite honest with you, but it really does dramatically increase the amount of highlight information that you're able to pull back. And just to show off just how much it is able to pull back, we did a comparison with and without highlight recovery here. So this is ISO 400, You've got ProRes at the bottom, Cinema DNG with no highlight recovery box ticked in the middle, and then with it ticked at the top. To be honest, they all look great, but you can notice a little bit on the overexposed bits on his forehead there. In the, without the highlight recovery, it is starting to clip a little bit and go yellow, but with the highlight recovery ticked, his face looks great. And if you look at the table behind him, it is clipped pretty much exactly the same as it is in the ProRes one down below it in the RAW without that highlight recovery tick box. And what this says to me is that actually without that box ticked, RAW is performing in Resolve anyway, about as well as the ProRes is. The ProRes looks fantastic out of this camera. It really, really does. But it's that little tick box that is the RAW's secret weapon. And sure enough, when it's ticked in that top shot, you get all of that information back in the table. Now, I took this one step further just to see how far we could push this. And I went up to plus four stops just to see at what point is that RAW going to break. And without the highlight recovery tick box, now his face is overexposed, definitely. The table is even more clipped behind. But if you look at the one with the tick box clicked at the top, his face looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of a yellow skew to it, but it's got just as much information as the ProRes does down below it. The skin tones are definitely better in the ProRes at plus three stops, though. But the inf it's got more information on the table where you don't notice that yellow shift at all. In the RAW at plus four stops, than the ProRes at plus three stops, which is very interesting. What this says to me is we're getting just under an extra stop of dynamic range in the highlights when we're using RAW with that highlight recovery box ticked. So that's just under an extra stop of information. So this is the same test at ISO 3200, and you can see the ProRes looks significantly worse here. The RAW on both accounts actually looks way better, both in terms of skin tones and in terms of detail. And as we move over to plus four, you can see it's definitely falling apart more at 3200 than it was at 400. So hopefully that's cleared up some things for you guys. I really wanted to do this because it was the most asked about thing by far in the comment section down below. And I think what this does show definitely is that the th different dynamic ranges definitely have different performance at, high different, at highlight recovery. And that is the reason for how the Blackmagic performed in those original tests. So we need to bear that in mind when we're comparing it to the other cameras. I do think though that was still a level playing field between, and that was a fair comparison between the Blackmagic and the other cameras, because I treated every Every camera the same in that it just happens to be that this this particular um, behavior from the black magic happened to not do very well in that specific situation that I chose it was a little bit unlucky there but this has cleared that up and it has showed that raw recovery definitely makes a huge difference to being able to recover that information so let me know what you think of these videos down in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to buy any of the products we've looked at in any of these comparisons, the links are in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.